Hello there, I'm Aldra Hill and welcome to some Imperator Rome, and I had a great idea of something to play and show off in a video. The Kingdom of Pontus. What's that you say? The Kingdom of Pontus doesn't sound that difficult, it's right here? No, this is not the right Kingdom of Pontus, I'm talking about Mithridatic Pontus. That's right, they're different, in much the same way that Pania and Parthia, it, it, like that's not the real Parthia, that's, that's Parth- it, uh, it's not the same. Okay, it's the wrong Pontus, and in real life didn't actually exist. This is just Imperator Rome's a vague approximation. Now, the real Pontus was started by Mithridates' second son, also called Mithridates, and there is an event chain to trigger it. Right, here he is, Mithridates Mithridated. As you can see, he actually lives in Phrygia, though he is the son of the ruler of Chios. Historically, what happened is two years after the game's start date, Antigonius, uh, Antigonos, whatever he's called, really decided he didn't like Kios very much, came in and killed this chap, and then also thought, I'm gonna kill his son too. But look at his friend. His friend is Demetrios Antigone, the heir to Phrygia. See, Demetrios tipped off his bestest buddy, and so Mithridates fled to Paphologia. There is an event series that triggers this. Then, a period of time later, he ended up ruling the Pontic tribe regions, and that is how we are going to be playing. So, a few problems. One, there's a chance for Paphologia to just say no. Two, after he's been accepted by Paphologia, it triggers another event which, unfortunately, unfortunately, for some reason, takes between 10 and 20 years to trigger. Finally, third, I can't cheat it. I'm not sure what's wrong with it, the events do seem to work if you play it normally, but if you attempt to do it through console commands, it doesn't work. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. So we're going to have to play Pontus normally, conquering small tribes around us and growing in power, as well as warring of Armenia and Cappadocia in a base normal game until we eventually get that ruler and use that to power through. But yeah, let's see how we go. Interestingly enough, the missions do actually resonate with what Pontus ended up doing, which is starting to attack Cappadocia, so we'll start that and consult the clans. A big problem is we have a kind of myriad of religions, because I am Cybleen, but in fact we have a surprising interesting mix of different religions, including Hellenic and Zoroastrian, so that's gonna be fun. Because Cappadocia is a satrapy of Phrygia, Paphologia is allied to Phrygia, and Armenia is allied to Iberia, Albania, and Trapezios. I would very much like all of Armenia Minor. They are currently in a big fight. But that's something useful. Okay, we're in for a stroke of luck. Mithrandi has now moved over to Papalongia. So 10 to 20 years from now, he will be with us as long as he is not imprisoned. First war, we're gonna grab and gobble up some of these small minor provinces just to get our strength ready while we prepare to fight people like Armenia and Cappadocia. And this is the joy of recruiting at least a couple heavy infantry, because you actually do a considerable amount of damage to them. We have managed to get an alliance with Papalongia, which is very good because we cannot handle dealing with Phrygia. Oh, oh no, Armenia is declared on us. What? Why? What did we ever do to you? No, 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 not like this. Thank goodness we got Paphalongia as an ally, because now they're just riding to our victory. We might actually be able to win. And they are actually giving it all to us, so we might be able to take this for free. All right, well, their troops are killed. We managed to win a pretty good battle there. Now we just have to finish seating this and then try and fight Armenia. Oh my god, we've managed to unite and actually catch them while they attack us on the hills. And while we both do have bottleneck, they are a minus one, and we have a better general. Thank god. Now that doing pretty well. Pretty good. I tell you, these early battles are super interesting in that you are constantly darting around. I have literally no manpower and no money anymore. I kind of need to end this war soon, but as soon as I do this, I can win. It's just kind of tricky. <laughs> oh boy. And they've stopped giving me the provinces for some reason. I don't know why. That's a bit frustrating. All right, in our first major war, I think I'm going to have to peace out because... There's just too much to do. Like, I can't take this. And it looks like they're not giving me any more territory for some reason. Like, refuse. Let's just take anything we can get. But it's going to massively increase our country size, so that's really good. Right, we've grown really nicely, so now it's just a case of waiting for a little while. Again, it is 10, 20 years from when he moved there, and it's only been about 7 years since the game starts, so we've got probably around 15 years remaining. I love this event where you get a stop pile disappear because a bunch of people have stolen some stuff. You get a little bit of tyranny, you get cruel, as well as being popular. It makes you lose 1 charisma, which is my biggest stat, but I gain 10% slave output for everything I'm a governor of. And I'm the governor of a lot of things, so like, aren't I? I think I am. It's like so useful, like it's just a net positive for everything. 
Alright, time for another war. We're going to declare war on this chap. He's going to call in these guys so I can nick this entire territory. And give me a huge power, uh, base of power, but also is an Armenian ally, so they'll have one less person which to gang up on me with. Another war won. Just in clutch, managed to get this entire border, but Armenia declared war on me. However, I've managed to get back Papalongia and, for some reason, Astropentinine, or however you pronounce it, as allies. So they've just walked themselves into a massive fight that I think I can probably win. When you get gated by your AE because of earlier conquests and you can't take this beautiful chunk of town. So sad. Not bad for only a few years in. Not bad at all. Oh, thank God, I was so nervous. I was really worried it wasn't going to happen. I've done so well, and I was really worried I'd have to restart. But here it is, the Persian prince, Mithridates Mithridates. They're looking to expand his influence. Pro-Mithridates supporters demand he be made king of our lands. And there we go. He moves, he loses foreign citizen, and a bunch of other people come with as well. And he becomes the new ruler, and we become a proper monarchy, which is brilliant. Um, We do have this guy to worry about, though because it would appear that he is extremely disloyal. Oh, gonna just change your commandership, aren't we? I think one of the first things we have to do in our new rule is to immediately imprison this incredibly good general because he is trying to overthrow my entire country, which is really problematic, but he's very mean, so he's in jail now. <laughs> Bye. The only problem is, of course, is that I'm never going to be able to finish these damn missions because I have to constantly fight in Phrygia, and I simply will not be able to handle Phrygia without any stronger allies. No one wants to be my friend. Having a look at the event files again, it does look like there is another event that's going to fire. The Mithridates in file number 8, no, event 8, between 1460 days and 1825 days. It's going to be, I think we get to choose between Greek or Persian heritage, which I think historically would make sense to pick Greeks. We remain Hellenic, which is good because there's a lot of good Hellenic stuck over there. But if we went Persian, we could start moving into Seleucids, but we'll see. And I realized I could just abort my mission into Cappadocia, so now I've got the matter of culture. So we're going to be pushing east and northeast, trying to go around the lovely Pontus Exunus. And then once we finish that, maybe we can try and attack Phrygia later. I just, I can't handle them just yet. And also for my ideas, the civic idea things, I picked build cost reduction and time, as well as civilization level and monthly civ change, so just to increase my civilization. And hopefully that works out okay. Hopefully we can avoid having another civil war by imprisoning the person we put as the governor, because he's a bit garbage. Hopefully this, this just makes things a little bit easier. We also need a new governor, someone who will be good. Please, someone who will be good. I do actually really like the loyalty mechanics in this game because right now what's happening is I have to deal with a slightly disloyal general. He, he's pretty close to being disloyal and he's mismanaging the land. Oh god, I gave him like no charisma. Oh well. So, I'm gonna have to be like, ah, don't worry about it. And he will gain loyalty, but Armenia will be less happy. But I can't do anything about it. It's gonna make things way more interesting because I'm just about to have a civil war. The Hellenistic Pontus, the Pontic capital of Sinop, and embrace Greco Pontic omens. That is cool. Um, if I, I can embrace these omens. Oh, and I get a bunch more, but I have to be that religion. Okay, so I have to be Hellenic. Oh, no, I have that 50 stability. That's fine. Oh, that's really cool. So I just get a bunch of different omens. And 15% more omen power. And if I have the stability, I can move the capital to Sinop, which gives me the correct culture and religion. Ooh, that's cool. And it gets park growth, park capacity, and the Macy gets secondary thing. Okay, cool. So I just have to get to the stab levels that I need. That won't take too, too long, right? All right, here it comes. This is the price we pay for getting a brand new ruler and also, like, doubling the size of our realm. We get a civil war. And it is bigger than our actual country. That's a that's a big one. Oh, they only have 2,000 light infantry. Oh, really? It is remarkably easy to win a civil war when it would appear that the only people who had any soldiers was a single clan retinue. I'm just sweeping across with siege stack, taking everything. It's just going to be a mild inconvenience at best. Oh, oh, Armenia's joined. Why is Armenia joined? That's the opposite of good. Oh no. Oh, and the AI thinks it can take my mountainous province when I've got troops nearby it can't see, you foolish baby. Yes, civil war over. Time to kill them all. Okay, we're gonna embrace Greco Pontic omens. Our people look to many different deities, be it Zoroastrian, Cyblian, or Hellenic, but celebrate and worship these gods and goddesses as well. In syncretic faith, 15% omen power. Okay. Ah. And then we can also change our capital. And then we can embrace the Hellenic Pantheon. Ooh. 
We would lose 30 stability, but we would convert to Hellenic. I would be tempted to convert to Hellenic, would I? Okay, I have no idea what I want to do. If I want to embrace the Hellenic Pantheon, it feels right, but I feel like it's going to absolutely destroy my country. So you're going to tell me instead, and you're going to make the decision. I'm going to end the video here, and you're going to go down in the comments and tell me if you think I should embrace the Hellenic Pantheon. This is weird. It's kind of like a let's play, but I'm editing it down. Game Gapster, please don't sue me. So definitely leave in the comments below, and of course, leave a like, and I hope you've enjoyed it. This has actually been really fun. I've really enjoyed this game. Pontus is surprisingly strong if you play it right, and I think I'm doing... Pretty okay. So I was Algernon continue to be, and this has been a very weird Pontus game. Tell me if you think I should go full on Greekaboo. Bye bye.